welcome to this short video, hopefully. I always say that, you know that, and they always end up being 30 minutes long, but I genuinely do want to make this a shorter one. Uh, this is a Fender Japan Telecaster. The frets are worn down too much for a fret level. There just wouldn't be enough height left on them. So what we're going to do is get the frets out and put some new vintage frets in. So the first thing I need to do is get the neck off. Um, obviously with a Fender bolt-on neck, take the neck off. It's just a lot easier to refret because you can get to these high frets. Use your fret press if you're not hammering things in. Um, I don't hammer in, I use a fret press uh, as we'll see shortly. Okay, so I've got my uh, tools sorted out for refretting. There's two really, there's a soldering iron and the uh, fret remover itself. So the soldering iron has a groove cut in the, uh, in the top of the bit. This is an old iron that I only use for this. And the groove will sit on top of the fret and the groove uh, stops it sliding off onto the fretboard, which ideally you, you don't want. And um, the purpose of heating up the frets is, if these frets were glued in, it would melt the glue. Unless this fret, uh, this guitar has been refretted already um, and uh, the frets have been glued in, they won't be glued in. But the other purpose that the heat serves is it um, it warms up the wood around the the, uh, the fret slots and it releases the oils in the wood and it makes the wood a little bit softer and a little bit less brittle and with rosewood that's particularly useful because it can be quite brittle so what can happen is when we pull these frets out the tangs underneath the frets will uh, will catch on the edge of the uh, of the slot and pull out bits and we'll have to start repairing and filling and all sorts which ideally we want to avoid so the first thing that we're going to do is is heat we'll start at, the, at this end we'll heat up the first fret uh, and uh, then we'll move on to heat up this one and then when this one's heated up we'll go back on on this one the way, I, the way I do it that way is that heating up will expand the fret, um, but I don't want it to, ex to be expanded when I'm pulling it out. I want it to be as narrow as possible. So I heat that up, let the heat do its work around the slot, um, loosening up the wood, and then uh, I'll leave it for, for the time that it takes, probably 30 seconds, maybe a bit less, to heat up this one then I'll go back and take that one out and then I'll work my way all the way along the fretboard until I've done all the frets. So I'm just putting some heat in. Depending on how hot the iron is, um, this will take from anything from maybe 20 seconds to 45 seconds but I can feel it heating up now um, got to be a little bit careful that the iron doesn't slip off and that well basically as long as you're not pressing hard uh, it won't slip off and if it does slip off it's not gonna dig into the board um, so this is this is heating up quite nicely interesting you can see it changing colour as it as it heats up. So we'll go on to the next one. And all I'm doing here is if as I suspect this has not been refretted previously, I don't think it's a particularly old guitar, so I don't think it has. I'm just getting some heat into this fret just to loosen up the oils or free up the oils in the wood and lessen the chance of it splitting when I start to use the tool. So the tool is um, this um, is a um, it's made by Three Peaks, it's a Japanese uh, tool um, Stuart MacDonald sell this tool with their branding on and it's a bit more expensive um, but if you search around online, you can find these a little bit cheaper from Japan. Um, if you're in the UK, 
I think you may still have to pay customs charges on it. Uh, I'm not sure if the trade deals come in you get. But if not, it's it's great. Uh, it's definitely the best one I've ever used. I've used a couple of different ones. This is this is really really good. So we're down to the uh, the last two frets. Already heated these two up, and all the way up this fretboard, there's been no tear out in the slots, which is great. Sometimes you have to go down to the other end of the fret to be able to. Uh... So all of those have come out without any issues, which is great to see. Sometimes rosewood can be very chippy, and you'll find that um, you'll get chips coming out from either side of the slot, which have to be glued back in. Or you may have to fill with dust and super glue, uh, and then you need to level the board. So we're going to level the board now, anyway, just to make sure that it's completely flat. And also at the edges, I want a little bit of sharpness um, because I want the frets to lie nice and flat up to the edge of the slot along the same line of the radius of the rest of the uh, slot. So I'm just going to take a little bit off. I've checked the radius of the fretboard with this uh, tool and it's 7.25, so a vintage style. And so I've got a 7.25 sanding block. This is a radius sanding block and I've just put some strips of uh, sticky back sandpaper on the back of it and I'm just going to run it across the fretboard. What I'm going to do is do this without applying a lot of pressure because I don't want to distort the board so it's not flat or I don't want to sort of go down on either side at the end especially and make it dip down at the end. So. It's really a smooth motion, trying to keep it as flat as possible, holding it in the middle, so I'm not pushing down at either end of the block. I can feel that's a lot smoother. It's not really hitting the middle at the moment, so I'm just going to keep going for a little bit. What I might do is put some white China graph pencil on the board so I can see the bits that are being taken off by, uh, by, this, uh, by this block. There's a couple more tools required for this bit of the work. So the first thing I'm going to use is this um, Stuart MacDonald fretting, for, uh, fretting saw. Um, it's got a piece of plastic on it which acts as a stop which is adjustable so you can change the depth of your cut and I want to uh, aim for something like two and a half millimeters so I, I normally just set it for that tighten it up Originally on this, uh, the original frets on this guitar had the tang on the end cut off so that at the ends of the, uh, of the board uh, there isn't anything visible at all. And um, I could do that as well. Um, in fact, I am going to cut the, uh, the ends of the fret off because it looks neater when it's finished and uh, it's easier to uh, 
to file down the ends if you cut the the ends of the fret and the ends of the tang off. So um, I could, um, if I if I really wanted to um, to uh, to do it, I could not cut right to the edge of the slot. But the problem with that is then is that it's very difficult to work out if I've taken enough out of the slots to allow the tang to sit properly and also I don't really know um, if I've if I've taken everything out that I need to um, to get to the edge and then I've got to measure the tangs exactly right for each one so they have there's a there's a level of accuracy required for that which isn't reliable so what I much prefer to do is to just cut right across the board uh, and open up the ends here so that I know I've got nothing to worry about and I know I cut because I can't use the saw just in the middle it's got to be all the way across the only tool I could use to do just the middle would be this Japanese Hosco um, saw and it's pretty difficult if not impossible I'd say to get a consistent depth with this if you're just holding it in to the slot. So I use this for cleaning dust out of the slots after I've used the saw, but I'm going to use the saw first. So what I'm going to do is use the saw, um, cut the ends off the frets, and um, there'll be a small gap at the ends of the frets, but I can fill that gap in uh, so it won't uh, look obtrusive and uh, we'll be able to get the job looking nice and feeling great at the end. So let's go on and cut these. So I'm just going to very carefully get the saw into the slot and you've really got to be careful. You don't want to slip and just gently pulling it across and I can feel it cutting in. I think this cuts on the back stroke. Sometimes when you do this you find that you're taking some little chips out that weren't apparent before. So you've always got to go back and check that. But I'm pretty confident we're going to be reasonably okay. So let's get in a little bit closer and have a look at what we've just done. So I've just cut a slot which is around two and a half mil deep right the way across there and um, because of the way that the kerf on this saw blade is set that's going to be the right width as well to accept the frets. Uh, so I can push them in I know it's going to be about right sometimes I do it depends on the frets I'm using sometimes I'll widen the slot a little bit uh, using another technique but I think on this occasion I'm not going to have to do that what I'm going to do now is just use this Hosco slot saw just to clean out any dust and to make sure that every slot is genuinely deep enough and I'm going to go along all the way. Just quickly before we um, we move on to preparing those frets, um, when I was doing that um, levelling with the uh, with the levelling beam you will have noticed that there were some areas where it didn't cut down and didn't take off much. This is where the guitar has been played quite a lot and it's just worn a bit but you'll notice uh, I don't know if this is coming out on the camera but where the the groove of the slot is to either side of that that has been taken down a bit so I'm not worried that because the beam didn't take out these bits between the slots that it isn't level for installing the frets because the actual area just to either side of the slot has seen a little bit taken off so it's all level and the same at the other end we had this area here 
um, but just along the edges of the slots some material has been taken away by the beam so that's that's fine that's okay so the fret wire I'm using is this uh, Fender vintage size um, two mil wide, one point one high, um, made by Boston. It's just your standard nickel, or supposedly nickel. It's not actually mainly this in it. It's a normal fret wire composition in terms of the alloy that's been used. And all I'm going to do here is is offer it up to the board and uh, cut it down. Okay, the next job we've got is to use this Stumac fret nipper to just take a little bit of the uh, end of the tang underneath the frets so that that doesn't show in the ends when I've installed them. So basically, if I, uh, if I just demonstrate... So you've got a, um, a bit missing at the bottom. And this bit at the bottom won't stick out at the ends on the side of the uh, of the neck. That has the advantage of uh, meaning that you don't have to file the ends. You do file the tops off, but you can do that at an angle, which means that you are not taking any varnish off the ends here. And I think it also looks a bit neater not to have the metal showing out of these ends here. Um, I just have a little bit of a gap which I can then fill uh, with some material that looks the same colour as this varnished rosewood and it's going to look a bit neater and feel a bit easier to play as well. So I'm just going to go through uh, measuring up these frets and just uh, nibbling away at them until they're the right width. There's one thing I forgot to do um, to prepare the fretboard for installing the frets and that's um, to use this small three cornered file just to widen the top of the slots so they've got a sort of a V shape like that following the shape of the, f the file obviously and that will help with installing the frets so when the frets go in they will go in easily I don't want to push them too hard because they might bend or they just go in, go out of shape um, and, uh, and you've basically got to remove the fret prepare the slot again and uh, put a new fret in so all I'm doing with this is just going along and widening the top it's just a couple of strokes really like that and that just opens up the top of these slots so that when I come to put the frets in they slip in a little bit more easily I've got my tools ready for the fret installation the first thing the most important is this GMC fret press um, which I've been using for quite a long time. I've also got the larger version up there which um, will work over um, over the body of a guitar as well but this is the best one to use for uh, a bolt-on neck and uh, so it's pretty simple uh, all that happens is that you stick your neck in there put the fret in the slot and wind this round and it pushes the fret in um, there's lots of other devices you can use, a lot of people just hammer them in. I don't like hammering the frets in because I find there's a chance of distorting the curve on the frets. I'm also never fully convinced that I've pushed them all the way in when I'm hammering them. Um, maybe that's just an insecurity thing on my part. Um, some people use an arbor press which is a sort of press with a big handle, the sort of thing you use to make badges. And um, you can also get something to put into a drill press as well, um, which you just fit into the bottom of your pillar drill, and that will press the frets in as well. But this is um, this is what I like to use. So I've got that. I've got my super glue. This is the medium viscosity super glue. Takes about a minute to dry, which just gives you long enough to get some into the slots, position the fret into the slot, and push it in. 
and uh, I'll explain why I use that a bit later on. Um, and this is just some Vaseline. Um, and what I do is I'll just take a Q-tip and put a bit of Vaseline um, either side of the uh, either side of the slot, and then I'll put my super glue in. So this is the last fret. Uh, just put some Vaseline around it, and uh, I'm just going to drop in a little bit of um, this medium viscosity super glue. Concentration is quite important here. I don't want to get it on the fretboard itself. But the slot's okay, but that's good. And I have one more fret to put in. So here we go. I remember this one was slightly too long, so I'm just going to nip off the end of it. with a fretting hammer and we'll bring up the, the press to the fret and push it home and then I'm just going to take this paper towel again wipe off the Vaseline and any glue that may have escaped on both sides so I'm pretty pleased with uh, with that that all the frets went in nice and uh, flat so everything's even on the board so the tool I'm going to use for this is the um, Stumac uh, fret and nippers this is a relatively new uh, pair um, <coughs> because I like to get in as close as I possibly can. It just makes the next stage a little bit easier. So it's just a question of getting it square to the edge. Uh, I try to apply a little bit of downward pressure as well. And that means that um, you're not going to end up twisting the pliers and twisting the frets as you're cutting them. So just a bit of downward pressure and they just snip off very easily <coughs> with a good set of sharp pliers. And that's it really. And we'll just go through all of these frets in exactly the same way on both sides. What I'm going to do next is uh, use another tool. Um, this one's from Crystal Sop and um, this is a beveling tool for the edge of the fretboard, so it's basically a piece of um, plastic polypropylene, I think, or something, um, which you can put a, a file in, a diamond grip file, and it runs at the right angle for the edge of the neck to be beveled. So it's a great tool to use uh, if you want to get consistent fret ends. So what you can do is run it along the edge of the uh, edge of the board like that and uh, and it will give you a very consistent edge um, or and fret end uh, so what we're going to do now is just do the both sides of these so all I do is run the run the tool along the edge I'm, I'm putting my thumb here because I don't want to hit the nut uh, I've just uh, in between uh, these uh, these videos I changed the nut because the old nut wasn't high enough with the new frets so I really want to avoid bashing the nut and having to replace it again so I'm just putting my my thumb there so I don't run into the nut so, so it's very simple all I'm doing is beveling this edge And that's one side done and you can see the the holes or the gaps rather at the ends of the fret slots 
uh, which we uh, cut to uh, to enable us to to get these frets in. I'm going to fill those in, um, so they'll be the same colour as the uh, as the rest of the side of the fretboard, and they'll be uh, pretty much invisible. But that's the uh, the beveling done. Now we've got both sides of this fretboard beveled. I just want to take a little bit of the sharpness off the ends of these frets. Um, it's completely unplayable at the moment, uh, even if I'd done all the levelling. So what I need to do is just take this uh, this tool. This is a small fret end um, diamond file. Um, I use this for um, sometimes I use it for crowning frets as well. It's great for that. Another one from Chris Allsop and. All I'm going to do is just take the end of the the fret and just a couple of strokes on either side and that will just take the sharp edge off the end and I'm just going to do that for both sides. The guitar's in my levelling jig um, so what this does is it make sure that the neck is completely flat and level and uh, there are two gauges on the jig which I can set uh, before I start um, tightening up these uh, these straps and uh, and these putting these supports into place so that I can see that it doesn't move up or down so I know it's completely flat and what I'm going to do is um, use my levelling beam, um, which has a uh, a strip of sandpaper on one side, and that's completely flat as well. So all I've got to do is run that along the top of these frets, and I'll be able to get them level. What I've already done is is taped off the fretboard. Um, with some heavy duty masking tape, the blue stuff, and that protects it just in case I were to slip during this process. I don't want to mark anything. Um, so, all I've got to do is take this and run it along the frets, not really pressing down, but what I want to see is a little bit of material being taken off the top. I've marked the top of each fret with a Sharpie pen. So I can see when material's being removed. And I can see it going from some frets and not from other frets. It's always interesting that um, you never know until you do this exactly how level the frets are. Even if you use a fret rocker, they're never as level as they as you think they are until you do a fret level. And I just need to keep going until I can see a nice line on top each one. And I can see that um, there are a couple that are higher than the others and they're preventing me getting to these ones. So I've got to keep going on these until I can get down to the tops of the other flats. So what we've got is um, a bit of material just removed from the top of every single fret. So I now know that um, each fret is uh, not any higher or lower than the one next to it. And um, because the beam is basically the length of the neck, um, we've got some pretty good confidence that um, the whole of the neck is level in it as well. So one more thing I've got to do here um, with the um, with this is that I'm going to put a fall away in here, and what that does is counteract any upward curve caused by neck relief. So from the 14th fret on, just dips away a little bit down, not very much. Um, and there's a there's a tool I'm going to use for that, which is another diamond grit file. And uh, I'm just going to stick a bit of tape on the bottom of that at one end so it's slightly higher up at one end. Just do 
the frets above the 14th until I can see uh, material being removed primarily around this area here. So I'm just going to put the Sharpie back on so I can see what I'm taking off. Just put a little bit of tape on, on this end of the file and really it's just a motion across and you can see there's a sort of shape appearing on the frets here which is exactly what I want. So the essential reason for doing this is to prevent fretting out when you're doing bends up here. And this will prevent any interference by the higher frets. And that will do. Of course I can always check all of these with my fret rocker just to make absolutely certain that everything's as it should be. It's actually not a bad idea to do this at the end of a fret level because there are occasions on which you find that um, you think you've leveled them all off and uh, you can see these lines that have been cut through the sharpie by the levelling beam but there is a high fret still don't ask me how that happens it just does next tool in our arsenal is this um, fret crowning tool and this is another one from Chris Allsop this has got diamond grit in the groove here and it just runs along the top of the fret and takes off either side and brings the fret back up to a crown so I'll show you how that works so I just present it to the fret and run it across and this is kind of the opposite of the levelling process so what I want to see now is a thin line on top of the fret a thin sharpie line which is now appearing uh, these come in three different sizes as two mil two and a half mil and three mil and these frets are two mil wide so obviously this is the two mil crowning tool sometimes this can take a little bit of time because you may have had to remove a significant amount of material but uh, I'm kind of hoping in this case we didn't have to take too much that these ones at the top where we did the fall away are going to be the, uh, the ones which, um, which are going to require the most work. So at this point I'm just using a uh, fret abrasive rubber as a sanding block. A uh, fret abrasive rubber has a groove worn away in it uh, from use but uh, that makes it exactly the right shape for the top of the fret and I'm going through starting at 250 grit and moving all the way up to 2000 So I've got the tape off the neck now. Um, so this is um, this has all been smoothed over. Uh, everything's crowned, rounded. Uh, the the fret ends fret ends have also been um, been rounded and smoothed out. Feel really comfortable. Um, there's one job left to do, which is just to fill in these little gaps um, at the bottom of the frets. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is to use um, some 
some wax basically uh, it's a Liberon finishing wax and uh, it's used by furniture restorers and I've got some that's exactly the same color as uh, as, as these holes in the uh, in the fret fret ends and uh, I'm just going to melt some in there and smooth it off so this is really just a question of um, melting this wax and settling some of it into the ends of the slots and then I'm just going to scrape off the excess with this old credit card you can use anything really as long as it's not going to damage the paintwork but it just takes the excess off the ends and there'll be a bit left um, around just above the fretboard as well that I've got to take off too some of it's dripped down onto the board but it's not it's not a problem it'll come off fine and then uh, last step is just to uh, use a use a cloth any cloth will do fabric cloth not a not a paper one and just run it along and that takes the residue off so that gives us a nice even look all along the end of the frets Guitar's now set up, everything's finished on this job. Uh, obviously, new frets, um, got those fret ends filled. Also, did some electrical work, there was a loose wire in here, a little bit of a clean up of the electrics, and um, I had to put a new nut in because uh, this nut, or the old nut rather, was, uh, was too low. So, these frets being new, we had to have higher slots. So used that opportunity to put a Graftec Tusk nut in which is a bit better than the plastic one that was in there and it plays really well um, really like it, nice Japanese Telecaster um, I think this one uh, was made in the 90s or the early zeros and uh, job done thanks for watching this video and uh, tune in for the next one, thank you